Hi, this is Regaline Sabat, also known as Gigi, and you're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is David Maxwell, and he's a confidence coach. Welcome to the show, David. Hey, Gigi, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Such an honor to have you here today, David. Now, why don't you start off by telling us more about you and where are you from? Um, I'm actually from Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, I have to convince people of that because I, I don't have much of a Southern accent, but uh, this I've been in Mississippi and in the Southeast the whole time. And uh, so did that and then uh, got married, of course, like everybody else out of college, uh, had a couple of kids. I did uh, student ministry for 30 years. And then uh, my wife passed away about three and a half years ago. And after that, I was kind of really looking at what do I want to do for that next season of my life? And so what I do now is I, I coach men. Um, I help men really kind of find and live their ultimate adventure. I think every man's full potential matters. And I think a lot of guys are living underneath their full potential um, for different reasons. It could be personal reasons. It could be societal reasons. And so my passion is really helping men learn how to be men, how to be better men, better husbands, and better dads. First and foremost, I'm so sorry for your loss and my condolences in regards to your wife. And, and now, what inspired you to become a confidence coach? I just saw a lot of men were kind of living their life and trying to, you know, okay, how do I be a husband? How do I, how do I be a dad? They, they just didn't know. And so they're kind of going into it insecure and not real sure. So what they do is a lot of times they'll focus on, well, let me just work. Let me just make money. Let me be successful. And what they're doing is they're focusing kind of on the wrong things, but that's an easy check mark. They can say, okay, I'm doing well. But the relationship with their spouse may not be that good. The relationship with their kids may not be that good. Or dealing with the stuff. A lot of those guys are just oiled in security. They just don't really even know it because they're gotten so good at hiding it and kind of running away from it. So what I want to do is help men understand what it is to live with confidence. And confidence is not cockiness or thinking you're the best. Guys, there's enough guys who think that. Um, what confidence is, is it's that quiet, you know, I know who I am. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I am the way, you know, I've been created to be. I'm looking to grow. I know I'm not perfect but I'm, I am who I am. And a lot of guys aren't doing that. They're always playing a part. Uh, and when you play parts, eventually it's just gonna wear you out. I love it. Now tell us more about your podcast, The Confident Man Podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's a podcast I do. It's kind of like a weekly coaching session. And that's how I view it. And what I do is I'll get there and talk about different topics for a while. Sometimes I'll have a guest on hit different things about and we've talked everything from uh you know health uh for kind of digging into your own personal life kind of figuring out your emotions as a man also it's like how to be a dad what to do in that situation what does it mean to be a man who who grows and who gets better we've had a guy on who talked to us about the effects of abortion on men and how men are dealing with things through the abortion process, even though they weren't the ones having the abortion. So we've kind of hit all gamuts that men are dealing with today. Just like right now, we're, we're hitting about fathers. Right after Mother's Day, we really started talking about how to be a better dad. What does that mean? Um, I think we have so many kids in our, in our country today who have no fathers. Either the fathers are absent or they're just not that involved. So what I want to do is help men be more involved, be better fathers, even if they don't live with their kids, they can be engaged and learn how to be better dads. So that's really what the podcast is about. I try to do it in about a 30 minute time frame, just so it's an easy listen. Because sometimes, you know, I see podcasts out there that are two and three hours and, and that's hard for me to listen to. I know some people do it. You know, uh, Joe Rogan has made a career out of it. But for me, I want the guy who he's driving to Walmart. He can check it out. He's going for a run. He can check it out. Something that's easy to consume and that can just challenge them and help them be better each week. Very powerful. And you are also a part of the panel for our upcoming Global Confident Men's Conference that's on September 9th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this message today, I highly recommend reserving your virtual seat because 
tickets are selling out very quickly and it is it is a free ticket. Now, David, tell us more about what does leadership mean to you? Yeah, leadership, well, for me in dealing with men, I think leadership starts for most guys with self leadership. You know, sometimes as as men we'll focus on all the outward stuff. We want to lead everybody else, but the last person we end up leading is ourselves. And I think it really starts from within. A man has to learn how to lead himself, what to do to make those decisions. And sometimes they're going to be easy decisions. Sometimes they're not going to be. Sometimes it's going to be being uncomfortable, you know, learning something new, learning how to relate to someone in a different way, dealing with stuff that maybe you didn't think was that big a deal, but really is. So really leadership for men start self-leadership. They have to grow from within. They have to learn who they are. And when I say that, it doesn't mean that, you know, you, you sit in a position and stare at your belly button or anything like that. You know, for most guys, they know how to lead. They know what to do with that. But a lot of guys aren't really good at just leading themselves, figuring out what they really want, who they really are. And that really, to me, is the beginning of leadership because everything else flows from that. If you're going to be an authentic leader, you got to be real and people pick up on it um, where you work, your family. If you're playing a part and you're pretending, eventually everyone's going to figure it out. It may take a while. You're going to figure out that, OK, you're not being real and your leadership's going to go away. No one's going to trust you and no one's going to believe in your leadership if you're not authentic. That's right. I second that. It's very important to show up as your authentic self. Now, David, can you tell us more about the major challenge that you had to overcome in your life? Yeah. Um, well, it's funny. We, we In my family, we had two major things happen that we thought the first one we thought was going to be the challenge. In 2005, I lived on the Gulf Coast in Mississippi when Katrina hit and our house had over five feet of water. We lost everything. And we, we came through that. Uh, we had a bunch of people help us. And, and we kind of looked back if our kids were young and, and they kind of looked back and we saw a bunch of people. We really saw the country step up. Um, a lot of people from churches, people from all over the country. We had a man who let us stay in his house. We never even met him. He did it through the phone. And so we just saw a lot of people do great things. And we thought, OK, we made it through that. That's the big thing of our life. Because you always hear stories and you think, okay, that's the big test. Well, in 2016, my wife was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, she had a glioblastoma tumor. They removed the tumor. They began her treatment. And that really began a two and a half year battle for us of what does this mean? How are we going to get through it? My kids were older. My son was in college. It happened right before my daughter's senior year of high school. So they were older and that really was a blessing um, because they could kind of take care of themselves in those ways. And we focused on my wife. We had a good two and a half year battle. Um, it was hard at times, I'm not going to lie and say there were a lot of questions, a lot of tears, anger, all of those emotions go through it, wondering what's going on or doing the right thing or we not. But that two and a half years, really, a lot of the memories from that were really special. We have great doctors here in Jackson. Um, in fact, one of the top in the Southeast is, is here. And, and she was my wife's doctor and she was incredible. And so we were blessed through that, but it was still hard. And then for me afterwards, there's just a lot of questioning, figuring out what does it mean to go through grief? You never plan for this. You don't want to go through it. Um, but I, I did find something interesting, and that was the power of community. Because I started going to a grief support group, and, and I thought, okay, I'm going to go to this grief support group. And it was a free group at the hospice where my wife had passed away. And so when I first went, it was the most uncomfortable room in the world. It was the middle of the day. It was mostly older women. I was the only guy in the room. It was quiet. Nobody was talking. And everything in me just screamed, get out, get out, don't stay. But I stayed. And really, for the past few years, that group has been an incredible source of inspiration, of help. Uh, they really helped me walk through that. And, and so for me, I'm thankful because as, as the group changed and grew, we actually got some more men in there who would talk. And it just it's just a great time of really kind of working through that, finding out you're not alone, finding out that, you know, yeah, it's hard, 
but other people are going through it too. And there's just something about that. When you know you're not alone, when you know that other people have gone through hard times like you, I don't, I mean, it's not that they give you an answer that makes it any better. You just don't feel so alone. And I think it's one thing I learned is, you know, for a lot of people, they're going through hard times. Well, they don't have to go through it alone. They can do things to find those areas of support. So for me, it was that group. And then uh, for my kids, finding them, people they could talk to, uh, they did some counseling to help them as they walked through it. And that really helped us as a family kind of process all of it. Not that we found, you know, answers as to why, but we learned how to kind of assimilate the grief into our life and to do things like that. I love it. You're never alone. God is with you wherever you go. Very powerful. Now, David, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? Ha, um, walking with purpose, I think, I think mainly just find your purpose. And, and a lot of people think purpose is some, you know, great mission state that you have to have in your life all the time. And to me, it starts with just movement. A lot of people are sitting and waiting for a purpose when a purpose is more like something out there you go and get. And so what I tell guys to do is, is to start moving. A moving car is easier to steer than a parked car. And sometimes when you're sitting and waiting for a purpose, you get overwhelmed. You, you kind of, what do I do? What if I choose wrong? What if I pick the wrong purpose? And so what it does is that it kind of causes people to, to be fearful to hold back. And what I challenge men to do is to just be empowered to just start moving. Because even if you start in a wrong direction, you're moving and it's easier to turn back in the right direction. So for me, it's a thing of don't just sit around looking for a purpose, start moving on a purpose, start doing things to learn, you know, read, get coaching, uh, listen to podcasts like this one, do things like that to help you grow. And then you'll begin to start finding your purpose. If you're just kind of sitting at home, binging Netflix and expecting a purpose to hit, it won't. The only purpose you'll have is to go get more snacks while you're watching your show. And that usually doesn't turn out well. I love it. Don't wait for, for purpose. Find it. I'll say it again. Don't wait for purpose. Find it. Very powerful. Now, David, where can the audience find you? Um, they can find me at davidmaxwellcoaching.com. Um, all my information is there. And the Confident Man podcast is on all the podcasting platforms. I just look for my cartoon picture. It's there. And then link to that site is the confident man dot me, which right now I've got my free fatherhood masterclass. It's a free masterclass for guys, gives them three keys to connect with their kids in less than 30 minutes. So it's an easy way for them to begin to be better dads. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out David on all of his social media platforms and also his website, davidmaxwellcoaching.com. And David, thank you again for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. You have a blessed day. Thanks, Gigi. You too.